Hello YouTubers, I'm going to show you how to make your own blood smears for viewing in a microscope. This way you can see things like uh, spirochetes, uh, Borrelia burgdorferi and other disease causing agents. I mean some of these they don't uh, easily pick up on tests, there's a lot of false negatives. Uh, but what I've discovered is that uh, people who have been bitten by ticks, I mean, they may have one or two or three symptoms, others have more, and I could see them clearly in the blood, in their blood smear. Uh, and there's a little bit of a secret as to how to see it uh, more readily, as opposed to you having to spend a lot of time hunting and looking for it. So first I'm going to show you how to make the blood smear, and then I'm going to show you that, that secret, and then I'm going to share with you another hidden secret that I have not tried myself but I heard from another doctor uh, that, that that would be a second approach to see those uh, spirochetes specifically. So what I'm using here today is a uh, diabetes test kit. Uh, I don't use the portion that tests the blood glucose. Instead I use the, uh, the automatic lancing device. It's the One Touch Delica and there's a little lancing device in there there's a thumb wheel on one side and you, it allows you to adjust the uh, the amount the uh, needle pinces your your flesh uh, and it doesn't hurt that bad it's a little bit of a sting it depends sometimes you hit a nerve and it hurts a little bit more other times you can barely feel it so let's start off we're going to use an alcohol prep slide you can use cotton balls and liquid alcohol in a bottle basically just cleaning out the uh, the area that I'm going to lance and I've washed it beforehand as a double precaution what I'm doing is pulling back the trigger I'm applying pressure with two other fingers to my middle finger and then applying pressure on the lancing device so we can get good penetration I'm going to squeeze this out a little bit, I have a little blood here if you can see onto the slide. I usually do it off center. I don't put it directly in the center of the slide. A little off center. And I'll show you why in a few. I don't want to place my whole finger there so I'm just trying to touch the blood with the slide. I don't want to smear my own surface blood cells. I'm trying to avoid uh, contamination or less contamination. So other people have different techniques for smearing. I use the glass slip sli uh, slide cover. I find it's a lot easier and quicker to do it this way. Basically go in, let the blood uh, run along the edges and slide over. I'll put the glass slide on top. You got to be careful so it doesn't uh, move around. So that's a nice slide right there. Let's see. If I can pick this up on camera nicely. Now here comes a secret. If I were to leave this like this, I um, first off, if I were just to check this on the 100x um, objective, or you know, plus the 10x eyepiece, 1000x, I wouldn't be able to see much. I mean, I see the cells that turn out blurry, so you need oil. I use uh, uh, oil immersion, microscope kind. This is type A. This is type A and type B. I believe the B is more viscous. I started out using uh, type B, but I ran out of that, and I poured some of that onto my little dropper over here. So you definitely need oil for the oil immersion. And what I did through time, you know, looking through various blood smears, one day I accidentally um, discovered that I was able to see my blood cells sometimes seven days after the initial smear and they were still preserved rather well and the reason that happened was I put a little too much oil on the slide I put two drops right now a little too much oil on the slide and what it did is it went along the peripheral of the uh, slip cover it created a vacuum seal and I prevented dehydration of the uh, blood plasma and allowed the cells to be more viable for longer periods of time so I was able to make observations for longer periods of time and uh, little by little I'm watching all these things coming out of the red blood cells and time and again you know with various people who have been bit if I use the same method uh, slowly but surely you see these spirochetes burrowing
growing out of red blood cells. And it's amazing to see the various types, the various morphologies. I've seen the L form. I've seen the beads of string. And what I'm trying to do here is go down the entire peripheral of the glass slide. Don't know if you can make it out. I usually just go around first and then I'll hit the centers afterwards. So here you see how it's dripping? So I do side by side by side until I get the whole slide. This is not the only way to do it. The other way that I've done it is I've taken Vaseline, or I'm sure you can use baby oil as well, and a Q-tip and just do the peripheral first. So do around the slip cover and then go back and add the oil immersion in the center. So but the whole point of this going down the four sides of the slip cover is to create that vacuum seal. This way we can observe the blood. Now this is not, for some reason, I do, typically do a lot better than this normally. This is not coming out as good. It's just not coming out as even because I didn't center the, the uh, slip cover. But nonetheless, I'm almost there. I only have one more side that needs uh, the oil to run down. In this case, I'll just put another drop of oil to make this a little quicker. Just for show and tell purposes here. Okay, so here's more oil, so let it run down, there we go, now I'm just trying to cover the center as much as possible, let it run down, And this is pretty much it. I mean, this slide is ready for observation. I have a um, a video camera. It's a nine megapixel video camera for my um, for my microscope. But uh, I mean, it doesn't produce grand images. It's still a little lacking. So I'm trying to find an alternative. Once I find an alternative, and I'll make a lot, you know, a lot more posts and a lot more videos showing my uh, uh, my discoveries and my observations. But, uh, yeah, so let this, you may, you know, it depends on how many symptoms you have. If you have one, two, three, four symptoms, then, you know, you may not see it right away. You may still need to do some hunting, and the longer you leave it, uh, the better the conditions for Borrelia uh, in your plasma uh, become for them to come out. So, in other words, when the oxygen goes low and the pH goes low, you know, it becomes more acidic, then they feel that the conditions within the red blood cells are not conducive to their well-being so they start to burrow out and you know find alternatives um, and that's when you'll see them um, like I said with the conditions what I found is the more symptoms people have the uh, better chances of you are of seeing this and other words, if you had like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, especially in those cases, that means they're pretty much scattered throughout your whole system. And you can find them at the tips of your finger to the tips of your toes, and they're just they're just abundant and plenty. Uh, and chronic fatigue is not the, uh, borreliosis is not the only indicator of chronic fatigue. There are other infections and what have you, but you know, it, it's a place for you to start. Have a look. Uh, Lyme is a growing growing concern uh, and the CDC just reported that their initial 30,000 new cases per year are, are wrong. I mean they, they, they knew they were wrong all along. They estimated there's anywhere between 4 to 10. Uh, other estimates were like it could be up to, upward to 20 times the amount reported. So right now it's at 10 times. There's about 300,000 new Lyme cases per year. And that, I mean that doesn't account for all the Parkinson's, MS, lupus, IBS, all those ME, chronic fatigue syndrome individuals who simply just don't know that they have Lyme because of the poor testing. So I'm sure, and I can almost be positive that the numbers are way higher than 10, uh, 10 times. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful. You know, report your findings to me. I mean, you know, if there's anything that, uh, you discover, learn, please share with us. This way we can continue on. Uh, the other tip and trick would be to add hydrochloric acid. So before you put the, uh, the slip cover on, add a drop of 50% hydrochloric acid. Uh, Borrelia is, uh, is uh, hydrophilic. It, 
I'm sorry, acidophilic. It loves acid. It, it thrives in acidic environments. And your red blood cells and white blood cells will disintegrate in hydrochloric acid, but the uh, Borrelia will be left intact and you'll be able to see them uh, swimming around. So I hope to post future videos of my of you know slides that I've seen from various people and um, I uh, you know when I get my upgraded microscope I'll definitely post those and have them available. Thanks for watching. Take care.